Hey everyone, welcome to the Industry Show. I'm your host, Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Anand Rajaraman. Anand, welcome on the show. Thank you, Nitin. Well, thank you for being here. So let's start with who is Anand? You know, uh, I you, I think of myself as uh, an academic who became an accidental entrepreneur and then became a venture capitalist. So uh, I started my uh, career in uh, in academia. I was doing a PhD in computer science, minding my own business. Uh, when I met these bunch of crazy dudes, uh, who and we got this idea to start a company, um, and uh, and then I ended up starting two companies and. Uh, uh, naturally going on into venture capital while still keeping one foot in academia because I still uh, teach. So it's sort of, I'm sort of, you know, my identity sort of straddles the world of academia, entrepreneurship and venture capital. And a little bit of uh, sport and cricket. Yeah, we'll get to that uh, yes. later on in the conversation. I saved the best for last. Yes. <laughs> so tell us about rocket ship. What is the mission, the vision, you know, the the big idea, why you started this? And why do you do this even now? Yeah, so look, I've, uh, I've been doing venture capital for uh, 20 years through many ups and downs since since 2000. Um, and, uh, you know, when Venki and I uh, start, you know, decided to start a rocket ship 2015, we wanted to do something different, uh, not the same venture capital model that we've been doing for many years. And so we said it would be interesting to, to do a venture capital firm that's entirely data-driven um, and algorithm-driven, like, like a quant, uh, venture capital firm almost right um, and so that's what rocket ship uh, vc is it's a, it's a venture capital firm where all our investment decisions are backed by uh, data and algorithms our algorithms help us identify companies based from a large data set and then we end up investing in some of those companies very scientific approach I mean, very computer science phd like and as i told you i'm an I'm, I'm a failed academic who became <laughs> an investor right <laughs> we learn from our, our failures. So we'll, we'll talk about that too a little right. bit. Give us a sense of the size and scale of rocket ship, but more importantly, the impact uh, that you and the team have created through this. Yeah. So interestingly, we, uh, we are on a third fund, uh, mm -hmm. rocket ship uh, fund three. Our third fund is about $120 million fund. Uh, we've invested. Uh, the one interesting thing is, is because you're using data and algorithms, you're not geographically restricted to any one area. Or we have a very small team of about five or six people. Uh, we're all based in Silicon Valley, uh, but the majority of our investments are outside Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. right? So we're not uh, geographically constrained in any way. So about a third of our investments are in uh, in the U.S. Silicon Valley. A third are in India. Uh, and a third are rest of the world. The rest of the world includes Indonesia, Middle East, um, you know, Latin America, Europe, uh, all over the world. And, and these are just the companies the data has told us were interesting. And you're in about what more than a dozen countries? Oh uh, yeah, you... definitely over a dozen countries. I'd say maybe more like twenty countries probably. And uh, we have about uh, sixty investments so far. And you know, when you look at these investments, and when you look at uh, the impact these investments are creating. So obviously in the VC world, you look at what was the return, how many got acquired, how many got uh, you know sold, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but when you look at the work these startups do, these companies that you invest in do, mm -hmm. if you were to kind of take a, how many lives have they touched? How much, you know, that that's what uh, I'm looking at when I say impact. Right. And it just kind of gives you that size and scale, right? Which which would be massive, I would imagine. Right? No, definitely. Look, I think, uh, the, and that depends on the kind of company that you invest in, right? So when you invest in a in a consumer-facing company, that will naturally tend to touch more uh, sure. people uh, than a you know company that is in the business-to-business -business space selling some automation technology or something like that. So, so our, our portfolio has a mix of both. Um, and perhaps uh, companies that that touch the most people are companies uh, in India that are consumer facing, right? Because it's a it's, it's a huge market. For example, one of our portfolio companies, Apna, is yeah. in the is in the business of uh, you know uh, connecting blue collar workers in India and upskilling them and finding them job opportunities. That's touching you know hundreds of millions of of, yes. of, of, of people right there, right? So, and by the way, congrats on that investment. I remember. I mean, we had. Uh... Uh, Karna from Apna on the show uh, a little while ago, and right. I believe it was the fastest to not that it matters. fastest to a billion dollars is the fast, yeah. fastest. Yeah, it was fastest unicorn uh, at that at the time invested. Now after that, of course, there was a big bubble and things changed. But sure. uh, but at the time, it was the fastest unicorn. 
but they're doing amazing, impressive work and they're touching many lives that do need that level of access. So again, congrats and, and you know, kudos to the team, but also to you for supporting something that had never been done before. So, kudos to the data for showing it to us. Yes. <laughs> now, Anand, you know, data is awesome. It's amazing. And you've had many successful exits through rocket ship, not to mention your own. What's the one big challenge you are facing? You know, I think it's uh, it's very uh, it's very interesting, right? I mean, we live in a very interesting uh, time for venture capital and startups as a whole, um, where we are sort of at the back end of a bubble. Is is is, is all you can say because we we had incredibly low um, interest rates. Um, and that drove a uh, valuation, uh, valuation bubble. Um, mm -hmm. So what happens is right now, a lot of companies that had raised funding during the last couple of years are carrying unsustainable valuations. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, even when we, and for us, therefore, uh, you know, when we find a company, sometimes it's hard to make an investment because we cannot justify the valuation mm -hmm. that, uh, that they're at. So I think this is not a problem just for us. It's a problem for the whole sector uh, at some level uh, is... Uh, we need to sort of uh, start uh, seeing, uh, we, are, we are seeing, I mean, what we get more excited by now are companies that were started after that after that era, right? Because then we don't have to worry about, you know, we can you can look at it as, as a fresh company, not worry about justifying an old valuation. Uh, so, the, so, you know, you, you know what I'm hoping for is that uh, some of those valuations come down and some new companies get started that, that we can get excited by. So true. And you know, a little bit of this is I'm guessing the investors who don't want to let go of a lower valuation, the founders who may right. want to hold on to, oh, we were at a billion, we don't want to be at a 600. Exactly. Yeah, so it takes a little bit of that time, maybe shifting some of those mindsets. Mm -hmm. But then there's the awesome thing is there's always new opportunities coming into the market. That's exactly right. Now, on the flip side of challenges come opportunities, and I would love to hear what's the most exciting one that you're looking at. Yeah, no, look, I, I've been talking about rocket ship so far, and so I'll just go uh, go into sports now for for okay. this one. Just a completely different uh, different space. You you touched upon it briefly. Uh, the, one of the coolest things that I'm involved in right now is bringing cricket to the USA. Uh, you know, we launched a you know a T20 tournament like the cricket tournament like the IPL in India uh, in India because launched in the US. It's called Major League Cricket MLC. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our first season uh, in uh, July. It was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, four IPL teams involved as uh, team owners, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my partner Menki and I at Rocket Ship, uh, we own the uh, San Francisco team. It's called the San Francisco Unicorns. Of course, uh, right. <laughs> so, which ties together the two uh, two threads of entrepreneurship and cricket, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of the most interesting, uh, ex you know, fun thing that I'm involved in. Most exciting thing that I'm involved in right now. Uh, it's also an area where I have zero experience. Yes. Uh, so you know, so I'm just learning the ropes as I as I go along. And you know, as we discussed, uh, this is a truly long term play. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, you know, the, unlike in, uh, in 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 other other countries, the problem in the US is there are no stadiums to play cricket in. Yes. Right? So we have to build stadiums from scratch, and that takes time and money and capex, right? So uh, so there's going to be a lot of uh, capital uh, that needs to be invested in this, and the and the payoff hopefully happens, and it but it will happen over a long period of time. Well, if I could think of anyone to do this. You, Venki, and some of the other people that I know are involved with this are the best people to do it. You have the passion. You have the, you know, when you say you have no, no experience, but you have experience building things from scratch in many different areas. So I'm glad that you're at the helm of these things and uh, will bring cricket to the U.S. Yeah, and, and and I'm also very excited to you know uh, uh, to with, with the other investors who are involved in this. For example, Satya Nadella yes. from, from Microsoft is yeah. uh, the Washington DC team. Shantanu Narayan from Adobe is one of our uh, co-investors uh, with us in the in the in the San Francisco team, and so on. So we have a good uh, cast of people uh, in the investors involved in this as well. Now we are all super excited about that, and looking forward to the next season. Yeah. Now, as we look forward, I want to pause and reflect back, uh, take a look in the rearview mirror and uh, ask you to share two instances. One, 
that blew your own expectations and became a success beyond your imagination. Mm -hmm. And another one that uh, did not work out as you had expected and uh, was a failure, became a lesson. Mm -hmm. So let's let's uh, talk about the failure first, right? Always get, get that get that out of the way. Uh, there is this, uh, you know, the, the, it has happened a couple of times in my career. Uh, is that I've invested uh, in a in a company and the company is doing incredibly well. Uh, product market fit is great, scaling amazingly well, but then it blows up. And why does it blow up? It blows up because the founders didn't get along. Um, so uh, I think the uh, what I learned is that the one of the biggest risks for startups uh, is founder chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, founder chemistry, uh, you know, it doesn't get tested in when times are good, uh, but it gets tested in these uh, slightly rocky situations. Um, and, uh, you know, um, many startups, you know, fall apart on that, even if even if they have great futures. Uh, futures. And it turns out to be one of the trickiest um, things for an investor to evaluate. Uh, the founder chemistry. So that's that's a big a big learning. This happened a couple of times in my in my investing career that uh, promising startups have uh, failed because of uh, founder founder chemistry issues. And, and I feel fortunate that uh, I've been able to stick around with the same uh, partner, you know, co-founder across two companies and partner across venture capital firms. Uh, that uh, that you know, I'm surprised that you're not blown up yet. But but it's sort of <laughs> it's uh, unfortunate as well, right? So so founder chemistry is, uh, is, a, is is a hugely important thing. Um, so that's that's the learning failure side, right? Um, on the on the success side side, I'd say the single most successful investment that I ever, that I ever made and that became successful beyond my wildest dreams is Facebook, now called Meta, right? So um, so when uh, I remember when Winky and I invested. Uh, we visited uh, the, the the University Avenue office, uh, you know, with Mark Zuckerberg, um, and they had all these murals on the walls, and it looks like it looked like all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, kids who didn't have a real clue of what was going on, and we, uh, but they were they were scaling like crazy, and yeah, I remember investing uh, and saying, look, we don't know, we may just have to write off this investment, but what the heck, right? So, uh, <laughs> so that ended up being the uh, the most successful investment of my life, and they just kept scaling and scaling and scaling. It takes, uh, it you know, credit to Mark, uh, it takes uh, it, it, it takes a bunch of good decisions along the way. It takes also a lot of luck along the way. And again, uh, congrats and kudos to you for making that big bet and uh, for it to have paid off. And I'm sure you had a, a small hand in that overall success as investors and advisors. Not, you know, not really that much. I tell you that the, the dirty secret of investing, the dirty secret of venture capital, let me tell you this, uh, is that the companies that do best and return the most are the companies with, that you spend the least amount of time with. <laughs> you end up spending the most time with are the companies that ultimately return 1x or 0.5x or something like that because they're working so hard to save them, right? So, uh, <laughs> so unfortunately, as an investor, all your time is going to be sucked up by the underperformers. Well, as you said, the right data points you to the right investments and then you just right. let it coast along. Exactly. So, words of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anand, what do you do for fun? Uh, for fun, look, uh, these days it's, I'm following all this cricket stuff. Uh, but uh, but other than that, uh, I'm uh, I'm into fitness. I spend spend a bunch of time on on fitness related activities. I love to play chess. Uh, mm -hmm. Love hanging out with uh, with friends and family and so forth. So that that ends up being the uh, the fun part. That's awesome. Now we come to the most favorite part of the show for me. Uh, that's fun for me is uh, getting you to share your one line life lessons with us. Very interesting. So uh, let's see. The first uh, one-liner is carpe diem. Yes. Okay. So uh, you have to seize the day, and uh, an opportunity comes along, and you better seize it, right? It's not going to come, you know, multiple multiple times. Um, uh, second one is, uh, you know, you whenever you look at anything, uh, don't touch the game. Look, look at it from first principles. First principles always been the day over conventional wisdom, right? So I think that's, uh, the, you know, I write everything from first principles. The third is, if the world doesn't seem to be working according to your assumptions, then you should question your, question your assumptions, not what the world is doing. Um, 
both is kind of unrelated to, you know, it's more about living. I think you got to live life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. Right? So live life to the fullest. And uh, finally, I think this is the hardest one to do. And I try really hard uh, and it applies across sports and across uh, most many aspects of life. And it is uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. Karmane varishte maafale shukadachana. Right? So don't, don't worry about the fruit of your action. Just, just do the actions. Oh, thank you so much. And I agree with the last one. I mean, mm-hmm. as simple as it is, as many times we've heard it mm-hmm. growing up, it's extremely hard to follow, but the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, that detachment is, is something that we understand, but to put it into practice uh, takes a lot of effort. Right. And because then, especially as you learn in, uh, in, in both in cricket, for example, right, you can play this, the bat, batter can play the same shot and get out once and get a six the next time, but you shouldn't prevent him from playing the shot because it's the right thing to do at the right time. Right. So, uh, so it takes courage to, 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 to follow it. And the same thing is true in investing. It's a process oriented thing. You've got to keep doing the right thing. Sometimes luck works your way. Sometimes it doesn't. Right. So, so true. Anand, thank you so much for making the time for sharing your journey and story and your one-line life lessons. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for the opportunity.